Hello world of YouTube and welcome to another episode of Redacted, the show where I take a look at records that have a solid foundation but a spotty execution and make it a smoother listening experience out of it all. And May's kind of been a weird month for me to set up for some reason. I've had a handful of ideas in flux that have gone in different avenues. I was going to do a Denzel episode on Zoo as a second chance from a collective body that I did early on into something a little more focused. But I focused it into a micro-redacted. I was going to do one on Tech Nines The Storm because I did his album. Like, I did, like, the eight-album thing back, like, way early on in the show, too. And focused that into one redacted. And I'm still going to do that at some point, but not this month. Instead, I'm going to do the topical one on a project from a group that sort of helps me or allows me to sort of pay tribute to the show and its roots as far as tackling a group again that was the first episode of this show and Mike Redacted and is one of my favorite groups of all time, the brainchild of Jamie Hewlett and Damon Alburn, the Gorillas. I love this group, you guys know that. And while I thought that this record had some really strong tracks, one of which was on my Singles of the Year video from last year and had a lot of really good collaborations and a nice follow through with its thematics and writing, I was a little let down by it in comparison to what they've been doing lately, and when they dropped the Deluxe Edition, I was also a little more let down, because there were some bangers on there. It could have allowed for some fun moments in the sort of storytelling side that this group sort of represents, and I'll touch on that a little bit throughout the actual breakdown, but the album in question is the latest as of 2023 album by the Gorillas, Cracker Island. <laughs> I thought Cracker Island was alright, you know, while I thought that it did fumble the bag in some of its collaborations, the ones that worked were fantastic, and I think in spite of some of those missteps and collaborations, the overall lyrical threads of observing stand culture and liking it akin to, like, being members of, like, a cult is an interesting parallel that I think has a follow-through in the original edition, but is sort of expanded on a little further in the deluxe edition very well in ways that I feel like should have just been on the album proper and when put in the album could have even been utilized in ways to sort of expand on deep cut nods in some of the collaborate given some of the collaborations at hand the sort of good to bad song ratio gets flipped into a different realm with the inclusion of said bonus tracks and plus i'll be honest some of these tracks have grown on me since i've sat and spun this album to do this redacted and also in context of within the band's discography. Something that I'll talk about later on this year. The biggest thing I wanted to do with this version of Redacted was not only enhance those themes and balance out the good to bad song ratio, I wanted to mess with the pacing a little bit because I do like the groove sustained across Cracker Island, but I feel like by switching some tracks around, you keep the momentum and channel it in some interesting ways that for an album that's about observing these ideas amidst this groove helps keep that groove a little wonky in a way that the gorillas kind of do really well during their highs. My version of Cracker Island is 44 minutes and 13 tracks long. Let's go ahead and cut to the track listing and break down why I laid down the tracks in the order that I did. They taught themselves to be a cow. They didn't know his many strategies. Interlocking cluster bombs. Like drum and bass, I throw, I throw stones breaking through glass houses. Dead broke, never put my money where my mouth. I always keep you close beside me. Feeling tree, I'm silent Faz o drink, brinda com a gente Que os moleque tá vivendo uma vida But in the magical, there's a pretty one I ask you where it goes, cause I really want Left behind, staring at a robot Don't be sad I know I fantasize Although I don't be Não me abraçaste, não sei quando llegaste Pero não quero que te vá Play the sheet, but beware of the wolves, I 
hypnotized by the crocodile smiles. The exchange is brief, but watch for the tea. Now you'll notice in at least the first run of this album, which I would argue is the stronger of the halves on the project, uh, is pretty intact. I just kind of did a little bit of rearranging because it still starts with Cracker Island and Oil, two collaborations that just are knocked out of the park. I love Thundercat on Cracker Island. I think that it's a good sort of mission statement for the project. And I think that it leads really well into the groove of Oil with Stevie Nicks. I think that it is a fantastic track that has a beautiful fucking chorus. And I think that it sort of embodies the sort of positive twist amidst these ideas that the sort of Cracker Island in question would be permeating out. And one of the things I wanted to do after that was give it a really hard pivot. And so I did with a collaboration of Captain Chicken, one of the bonus tracks with which sees them coming back together with Del the Funky Homo Sapien, an artist that they haven't really worked with much since the debut. And I feel like gives them an opportunity to sort of make a new sort of iteration of the ghost character that he portrayed in like the lore sense with the character of Captain Chicken and the song Captain Chicken kind of acts as a good extension of the themes of influencer culture with this character amidst this Cracker Island group of characters and I think is a, is a fun moment that could have led to fun lore stuff for the fans of that stuff. And if they didn't necessarily want to give fans more lore in a positive sense, like bringing Captain Chicken into an aspect of the story, you could use him as like a punchline, as like a fun nod. You know, the ghost had escaped Russell and had possessed Captain Chicken in the music video for the song. You can have Captain Chicken show up on Cracker Island only to freak out when he sees the gorillas and be a sacrifice because the lyrics and the tone of Captain Chicken kind of have this dark twist that gets darker once 2D comes in into the chorus. He almost sounds like he's singing in a trance and you can have him commit these atrocities against Captain Chicken in the name of the gods of Cracker Island. I don't know. It's an idea that I can't, that I thought of when it came to like bringing Del the Funky Homo Sapien into this that extended past just bringing the, the artist that they collaborated with back because Del was like an integral part of world building on their first album. But I think from there, I wanted to keep that sort of slower uh, groove intact with a ballad-style song of the Tired Influencer. Another beautiful track, and I think that it's good that it comes earlier on in the track listing to give you the in inverse of the coin. But I think following Captain Chicken, that inverse hits a little bit harder. I love the Tired Influencer. I think that it is a beautiful track. And I think that it, again, it touches on influencer culture and the other side of that coin pretty fucking well. But I think that Silent Running coming after that is a fantastic point in the original album. And it's, of course, intact here. I think that Silent Running is a runaway track with me personally. It's been nothing but a grower every time I spin it. I just really love the harmony work, that groove that picks up here, and I try to keep that energy sustained, but it helps rev up the album's groove a little bit while being a fucking banger that keeps, again, those thematics at their core strengthened. Which I then try to coast that groove to for a couple of tracks with Baby Queen and Controla. Baby Queen sort of acting as a strange autobiographical cut with Damon and having this nice just bright synth groove to sort of just bounce along to. It's sort of the jog after the takeoff of Silent Running that I carry into Controla with the with MC Bin Laden's contributions being sort of autobiographical and talking about his piece as being an influencer and how it's changed his life. After a couple of tracks sort of sitting in a sort of thematic jog, I wanted to sort of ramp up the energy a little bit more again with New Gold, The Tame Impala, and Booty Brown Cut, which sort of acts as another world-building track that was a nice single in that sort of regard, but I still kind of wish... Booty Brown was utilized a little better. He's fine on the track. He's got some really decent bars, but I think in comparison to the collaborations of other artists that they worked with in the past, like Dell on Captain Chickens, it's not the worst collaboration. I still think Beck is severely underutilized, but as far as being a little let down by a collaboration, I think New Gold sort of hits that to a little bit of a degree for me. 
But I still think it's a decent track. I think it's got a strong hook as well. It's just not my favorite collaboration the Gorillas have done. And I use it here as sort of a world-building, groove-enhancing track that gets sort of a swift swerve into Skinny Ape, a strong pivot solely into 2D's mindset because this album has sort of been all about world building with Cracker Island and dissections of fame culture and influencer culture and it's sort of touched on 2D a little bit in that in his headspace but it's also kind of talked about in a meta sense uh Damon and not really 2D so I pivoted into Skinny Ape and Tarantula Skinny Ape being a track that sort of dissects 2D out in a little more of an intimate sense that has a really nice immediate ramp up and in intensity in the back half that I sort of wanted to have as a dissection from the groove from New Gold before throttling you into hyperspace and settling you back into a really good groove with Tarantula, another track that sort of continues that sort of pocket of 2D, a little more of a sad leaning tune in that regard, but again, 2D is gonna 2D. <laughs> And I think if we're talking about carrying and amping up this back end a little bit because in the original version, yeah, it was there in the back end. And I think that its groove in the original helps fade itself into Tormenta very well. And Tormenta is a track that I didn't necessarily try to write off in my review, but I didn't speak of in any sort of terms. But I like Tormenta well enough. I think that it's fine. And I think that at this point in the record when we're talking about a little more of a sad aspect of the story pulling out from Cracker Island into the world at large at this point of the record kind of makes sense it's still it feels like a late album cut and so I kept it late in the record because I also have it fade into instead of Skinny Ape uh, Possession Island I just kind of let the record sort of sail off into the sunset after Tarantula's last little groove throws in there at least as far as the pocket world and story told in this album. I think that it's a nice send-off to this overall world. I think that it's a nice, soft sort of resolve. I don't let it be the resolve because this album feels kind of cinematic in scope. You know, Cracker Island being the opener, even in the original, has this sort of cinematic edge. And so instead of having an end on Possession, Possession Island, I give this album a sort of roll credits moment with Crocodiles, which acts as both a sort of roll credits moment because the beat itself, that laid back organ groove, is just really infectious and evokes like that decompression that one feels after like indulging in a story. It has this laid back nature that I think suits the sort of idea I'm trying to use it for, uh, while also being a sort of in memoriam because it's just... True Goy out of De La Soul, and he passed away. Uh, this was supposed to be for the Meanwhile EP, but I think it touches so well on time and the fame and the sort uh, and like some of the negative aspects of that so well. It kind of fits the themes of the album and again sort of helps solidify that end of it all uh, sort of feeling. For those that don't know, know, he passed away this year. So it's it's like retroactively like kind of a, a nice little, again, in memoriam piece that they decided to release finally. And I like the track. It's a really good track. Um, I'd, I'd say I'd like it more than some collaborations that the group have done together, but I don't think they've ever done a bad collaboration. And I think it's also why it's a nice, fun, like, nod to the fans moment, which has kind of been a follow-through I've tried to keep throughout this. You know, while it's an album that deconstructs fame and that relationship between uh, fans and fame, I think that having an album ripe with those ideas while having its own versions of that is kind of funny. Obviously, De La Soul kind of had like a nice extended life, like especially in, in a lot of bigger audiences because of tracks like Feel Good Inc., but they kind of just had this relationship together. They kept collaborating and they kept making bangers. I don't think they've ever made a bad song together. And I think that closing this ab album out with a sort of send-off to that uh, in, in a lot of ways is how I do it. And that's my version of Cracker Island. What'd you think about it? Did you want to listen to it? It's linked in the description, a YouTube and a Spotify link. If you like this redacted, give it a like. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. I drop two to four vids a week, depending on what I've got going on. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Also, before I go, a little collab alert. I was recently on an episode of my friend Kaylin's podcast about Barry, the HBO show, Loud Fast and Keep Talking. It's Wherever you listen to podcasts, it's on there. While she's been doing sort of longer episode breakdowns on the show as it had aired, 
She's also doing like shorter reactionary episodes on the episodes of the new season, which is the last season as it's airing. And I was recently on an episode of the episode that just came out, Tricky Legacies. So if you want to hear my thoughts on that episode while having some thoughts about my uh, or my a look into my thoughts on the show as a whole, it's li- linked in the description. It's on anywhere you listen to podcasts, so I'll have one of the links down there at the very least. But go listen to the podcast in general. Kalen runs a good ship out there, and uh. It's a fun time, and if you love Barry, it's it's a good conversation. I'm gonna go. I've been viral racked. You guys have good days, lives, and situations, and I'll see you another day. <laughs>